friends. Welcome to another episode of Flute Life with Katie Flute, and welcome to my childhood bedroom. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, my name is Katie, and I post a lot of quality flute content along with other music related videos with some other vlogs and other things thrown in there so if you don't want to miss my future videos please take a second and hit the subscribe button so one of the questions that i'm frequently asked is how do i switch from my student flute with closed holes to my intermediate flute with open holes so i thought for today's video i would try to answer that question along with some other questions about open hold flutes that you guys left for me over on the community tab before we get started i want to give a huge thank you to the flute center of new york who is sponsoring today video and who has provided me with these flutes to demonstrate on for you today. The Flute Center is a huge flute store located in New York City, but they also ship worldwide. They have practically every brand and model of flute that you can imagine, and they also have a huge flute sheet music collection. My friends there have given me a code for all of my viewers to use when shopping there, and if you use my code KTFL, you'll get some special perks, including free shipping, an extended 10-day trial period, which means that you can select up to three flutes the Flute Center will send them to you and you can keep them and try them for 10 days. You'll also get an extended 18 month warranty if you do decide to purchase an instrument. My code also will give you 10% off any flute sheet music. Okay, so now let's get started. So question number one, what is the difference between a closed hold flute and an open hold flute? So to put it simply, a flute with open hold keys or French keys has holes in the middle of the A, G, F, E, and D keys, while a flute with closed holes or plateau keys does not. In order for the correct notes to sound on an open hold flute, you have to cover the entirety of the open holes with the pads of your fingers. Generally speaking, student flutes have closed hold keys, while intermediate through professional level model flutes have open hold keys. However, it is possible to special order a professional level flute with closed hold keys, which the Flute Center does, and I was told that it happens sometimes, but it's not a very common request. Question number two, do the open holes affect the tone quality or the sound or the projection of the flute? So the open holes are supposed to let the flute resonate more. However, though, if you're comparing a student flute with closed hold keys to an intermediate or professional level flute with open hold keys, there's a lot of other things that are going on there that are going to make that flute sound better from the student flute, including the materials used and the fact that they're gonna be a lot more handmade than that factory produced student flute. Personally, I like how the open hold keys feel. I feel a lot more connected to the instrument and you can actually feel the vibrations of the instrument in your fingers. The open holes also allow you to play some extended techniques or alternate fingerings that aren't possible on a closed hole flute. I am not an expert in extended techniques whatsoever, but I do know that on an open hold flute, you can play some multiphonics that aren't possible on on the closed hold flute as well as microtones. Some basic extended techniques would be pitch bending by slowly moving the pad of your finger on and off of the open hole key as well as completely moving the pad of your finger off of the open hole. So that brings me to my next topic of discussion, which is plugs. When you first get your intermediate flute after playing on your student flute for some time, it will come with little plastic plugs that are inserted into the holes of the keys. These plugs act like closed hold keys and you will be able to get the correct pitch even if the pad of your finger is not exactly covering where the open hole would be. The plugs are great for when you're first transitioning from the student flute to the open hold flute and you might find that there is a plug or two that you want to keep in the flute for the long term. Personally, in my own Miramatsu flute, I have a plug for the D key, for the ring finger in my right hand. I've experimented with taking it out over the years and there was a time where it was completely out, but I find that because my pinky and all of my fingers really are hyperextended, um, it puts a lot of strain on this part of my hand to reach down to the B key and to play all the notes in the super low register moving between them. Um, if I'm trying to force this 
pad of my finger to completely cover that hole and also I do have relatively small hands um, so personally that's what works best for me and the goal is always to play without any pain uh, so having that plug in there is eliminating the pain for me and yeah there's some people that are super super purists maybe I'd say about they think that you should have all the plugs out no matter what you should adjust your hands to it but everyone's anatomy of their hand is slightly different and there's not one size fits all solution when it comes to playing the flute you kind of have to figure out what works best for you with the guidance of a teacher of course if you are a student if you're having any questions about that and any strain or pain in your hands upon taking out the plugs i would recommend talking to a teacher that you trust and they can better assess the placement of your hand as well as how your hand is structured and how it fits on the flute if you don't like the look and the feel of the plastic plugs that can be easily popped out there is a product that the flute center sells it's called plugos and i think it's by Powell, um, but they are basically plugs that are made of silver and you need a tool to put them in and out I believe but they're a lot more permanent and they look a lot nicer on the flute so if there is a key down the line that you know that you want to keep plugged um, it looks a lot more like an actual plateau key Okay, so now I'm gonna answer some more specific questions that you guys left for me over on the community tab. Okay, so this one says, when is the best time to transition from a closed hold flute to an open hold flute? So I would say the best time to transition from a student flute to an intermediate flute with open holes is when you feel that you've outgrown your student flute and that is really a personal thing and is probably best to do under the guidance of a teacher. If you guys are interested in knowing more about that topic, please let me know in the comments below and I can make another video about that. Okay, so the next question is should a beginner start with a closed hold flute or an open hold flute so that's a great question I would say that the average beginner student is going to start on a closed hold flute just because generally speaking student flutes have closed hold keys also a lot of beginner students are younger and smaller so they have smaller hands and it's a bit more difficult to start with an open hold flute with the plugs out also student flutes are obviously cheaper than an intermediate or professional level flute and if you are just starting out on something and you're not sure Sure how committed to it you are yet it's probably a much better idea to buy a student flute until you have figured out if this is something that you want to stick with but I have seen some parents buy their child an intermediate level flute right away just because they don't want to have to first buy the student flute and then upgrade to the intermediate flute in a few years um, I guess they are fairly certain that their child is going to stick with it so I think that that's also an option and you can always leave the plugs in um, when you're first starting out. And then once they can work their way around the instrument, okay, they can start to take out the plugs down the line. So I'm gonna group these next two questions together because they're kind of similar. The first one says, what is the best way to transition to an open hold flute? And the other one says, is there a correct order to take the plugs out? So the method that I use with my students and the one that I would recommend to you is to take out one plug at a time. I would start with some of the easier ones to take out, which would be the A key and maybe the F and the E. The G and the D are generally a bit more difficult to take out. So for example, you could take out the plug in your A key for a few practice sessions. And then once it starts to feel comfortable, you can take out the next plug. And it's also possible for some of the more tricky ones or really any of them, if you're finding yourself having trouble completely covering the hole, I would take it out for you know the first five minutes of my practice session and practice some scales and then put it back in for the rest of it just so you can slowly acclimate yourself to it so it's not going to be a complete shock and you're like where do I put my fingers the other method is to just take out all the plugs at once but I don't really recommend this method unless you have large hands and an immaculate hand position but I think for the average student that's switching over, it's gonna be really frustrating if you go from completely closed holes to all of a sudden they're all open. So I would really recommend doing the one plug at a time method, which I think is gonna be much less frustrating for the player. Okay, so the next question, should all of the holes be open or is having plugs still okay? So like I mentioned before, this is a very personal thing and some teachers have some very, very, very strong opinions about this. 
personally, I think that the correct amount of plugs to have in your flute is the amount of plugs that is going to allow the player to play without any strain on their hands or any pain. You shouldn't have to contort your hands in some way to properly cover all the holes just for the sake of saying, I have all my plugs out. This isn't to say that you should get away with some really bad habits like having your fingers completely hang off the edge of the flute. I don't know if you can see that there but this is a problem sometimes where the pads of the fingers are not even close to where they should be. Um, so I'm not saying that you should ignore problems like that, but if you do have smaller hands and the structure of your hand is not allowing you to completely cover the key, I really think that it's not worth the pain. Ideally, you should have all of your plugs out and you should try to cover all of the holes within reason, but you don't wanna be straining your hand. So again, this is a very personal thing and I would recommend working with an experienced teacher that can assess the structure of your own hand and wrist and fingers and figure out what works best for you. So the next question is, when should I move up to an open hole flute and what brand do you recommend? So like I said earlier, the best time to move up to an open hold or intermediate level flute is when you feel and your teacher feels that you have outgrown your student flute. That's a very personal choice and there is no right or wrong answer. There are so many great intermediate model flutes out there. For example, this great Trevor James Virtuoso model flute but I would recommend trying several brands and models of flutes that are within your price range so that you can figure out what works best for you. It's a super personal thing. I would recommend setting up a trial with the Flute Center of New York where you can take out those flutes to keep for an extended period of time just to play with them and figure out what works best for you. But in the description box of this video, I'll put some links to some of my personal favorite intermediate model flutes if you wanna check those out. So I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please give this video a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And I hope that it answered some of your questions about the topic. Thank you guys so much for watching and for being here. And once again, a huge thanks to the Flute Center of New York for making this video possible. I'll put all the info about the Flute Center and the particular flutes that I showed in this video in the description box below. So thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.